I got a military age male uh, on a cell phone watching the convoy over. If you think he's reporting troop movement, you have a green light. Your call, over. Maybe he's just calling his old lady. <laughs> he stepped off. Hold on, I got a woman and a kid 200 yards out moving towards the convoy. Her arms aren't swinging, she's carrying something. Yeah, she's got a grenade, she's got an RKG rushing grenade. She's saying to the kid. You say a woman and a kid? You got eyes on this? Can you confirm? Negative. Your call. Fry you if you're wrong. Eastwood will finally win Bradley Cooper that Oscar he's been flirting with for the past few years. And if he does, somewhere in the audience, Leonardo DiCaprio will go, God damn it! Because he, of course, worked with Eastwood on J. Edgar with no Oscar win. Now, the reason I say that this might be a potential win for Bradley Cooper is this, this is the first performance I've seen from him, and of course this is just the trailer, but this is the first thing I've seen him do which I think might be worthy of the Academy giving him a win. Because I think before, it's really that Bradley Cooper's been invo and involved in great projects, so they're like, well, we can't leave, Bre leave Bradley Cooper out, throw him a nomination too. But at no point did anyone ever think he might actually win. Now, the reason I think he might actually win here is because he's just enough outside of his you know, normal persona, just enough outside of his comfort zone that it might make the Academy take notice. He looks like he's gained a little weight for this role, he's got that beard, he has the accent. All of these things are things the Academy loves to see. They love to see actors transform themselves. And Cooper looks to me uh, the most trans, uh, the biggest transformation we've seen him make yet. It's not a huge transformation, obviously, but for Cooper, I think it's pretty big. Uh, and I think that if he can pull this off, I mean, this is going to be a difficult story to tell uh, because it's, you know, a sniper sitting in one position. Uh, I think obviously they're maybe going to, it looks like they're going to jump back and forth during the movie. Uh, we'll see what the storytelling method is. Uh, obviously, uh, it's a very long story. He served several tours in Iraq. Uh, he is, as it says, the most uh, lethal sniper in American history. But also he has a, a very ironic end to his story. I don't want to give it away if you aren't familiar with what happened to Chris Kyle, but I think that this is going to be a movie that people potentially talk about quite a bit. Because more so than reflecting the war that we find ourselves embroiled in over in the Middle East, I think it's going to speak to gun culture in America, which of course is a very big conversation these days. I don't know if it'll be enough because it's so heavily set in the theater of war, so it might have a disconnect to people and bringing the argument home, but I think it might at least be a start. Uh, so I'll be interested to see if this movie can kind of get some traction with the award circuit. Now, the only thing that gives me pause, because you know what? You might be thinking, well, of course it's going to be an awards contender. You've got Clint Eastwood. You've got Bradley Cooper. You have a real-life American hero. You have a commentary on today's society. Well, sure, you have all those things, but let's not forget uh, what happened with Mark Wahlberg and Peter Berg's Lone Survivor, which was another very good movie, very touching movie about war, which also tried to go for an uh, awards qualifying run last year, has almost the exact same release pattern as American Sniper. Uh, a late December qualification, limited run, and then going wide in January. And um, Lone Survivor had a very solid box office run, a very strong box office run. So maybe American Sniper's hoping that at the very least, if it can't win over people at the awards, because you've already had the Hurt Locker get a lot of awards, you know, you never know what cause du jour Hollywood's going to go with, or at least the Academy's going to go with. So maybe they're hoping they can at least count on some solid box office. But audiences might feel they already went and watched Lone Survivor, although the support for Chris Kyle in this country, in certain pockets especially, is very strong. And they will all go and see this movie. So I think it has a very healthy box office um, future ahead of it. Now as for the trailer itself, uh, I thought it was good. I really liked seeing what Bradley uh, Cooper did here. I did not recognize Sienna Miller. I was like, who's the female lead here? She looks familiar. And then they were like, Sienna Miller. And I was like, wow, good. You know, you transformed as well, Sienna Miller. I don't even recognize that baby. No, uh, but I think that 
uh, that that will be interesting to, ex of course, explore the home life. But that was also done in the Hurt Locker. Uh, but I think that, you know, it also be a very challenging scenario for Clint Eastwood and the, the script here to make this movie interesting when a sniper is largely still. I think they're going to have to go for the tension and decisions he has to make. Now, I hope that these are all actual decisions that Chris Kyle had to make in the field, because when I saw, oh, it's a child and a woman with a with a with um, some kind of shell, I was like, really? Are you just doubling down on the emotional turmoil here? He's like, do I shoot a woman? Do I shoot a child? They have a shell. Are they giving it to us to maybe tell us we have to depower it, get rid of it? I don't know. But whoever runs at a foreign soldiers holding a, 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 some kind of ammunition, nobody would ever do it. Uh, it is indeed a tough call. And I like the line when the guy says, if, you, if you're wrong, they'll fry you. And that also shows kind of like the political pressure that's on soldiers in the field these days. Uh, you know, back, uh, you know, during our the Great Wars, World War I, World War II, etc., even Vietnam, uh, you know, atrocities would happen. Well, Vietnam, you know, all of these wars, there are atrocities. Uh, but, you know, wars, war is a dark time. And sometimes things happen not by design, but by accident. You know, and you make the best decision you can at the time. But today, the war is played out where everyone's basically watching you, like a video game. And everyone knows what you're doing, thanks to cell phone and technology, uh, and, you know, how easily you can get out information. If someone, is there, if there's a witness, someone sees, people will likely know what happened. Uh, whereas before, the media would often play along with the military and the government and squash a story. Uh, so I think that to show how that political aspects weigh in on a soldier, I think is fascinating. So I love this look at a modern soldier. We've seen a modern soldier before, though. So I'm really curious as to what's going to make American Sniper stand out. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a tall order for Clint Eastwood and Bradley Cooper. I feel they're probably up to it. And I feel this, and considering, you know, this was trending last night when this trailer debuted, that's how much interest there is. I think not so much in Bradley Cooper and Clint Eastwood, but in Chris Kyle. Uh, but that, of course, is not the demographic that's in the Academy. So we'll see. This might be another situation where an audience really supports a film that the Academy just doesn't get, which will be a nice change of pace because so often the Academy supports a film that the mainstream audience doesn't get. But I'm curious to what you think of this film. Are you excited about American Sniper? Why? Is it because of the talent behind the film or is it because of uh, Chris Kyle? Are you familiar with the story of Chris Kyle? Do you think it will make for a good film? And also, do you think this is something the Academy can get behind and that, um, you know, award season will reward considering Lone Survivor didn't have any success in that regard. It was also based on a true story, by the way. But looks like powerful stuff to me. Uh, but also, uh, the last thing I want to ask you, uh, how do you feel about all these movies about the war effort in the Middle East. Uh, do you think that you continue have, can you continue to have an interest in watching them? Or are you like, you know what, I've seen a lot of movies about this already. I, I would like to move on. And maybe it's too soon. Maybe you're like, you know what, um, I don't want to think about what's going on over there. All right, thank you so much for uh, everybody for tuning in. Write down what you think of this uh, trailer, and you can check out some more episodes right now.